Uh, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another Addy and Friends. Um, I've got a good lineup this one. I've got guys that have been bothering me for ages to come on, so I'm very interested to see what they're going to say. We've got Colm. Colm, thank you so much for coming on. We've got Samuel as well. We've got a good friend, a very good friend of mine, Hayden Jones, um, of my time in South Africa. We worked together um, for Fox Sports. We worked together for Kwesi Sports. He has, um, I think, the best South African boxing channel, SA Boxing Talks. If you want to get your fix on anything South African boxing, you have to be subscribed to that guy. Um, before we start, Hayden, what's it like right now with regards to South African boxing coming back? Um, are we close? Are fights behind closed doors being proposed? Anything? Let me tell you, the worst news we've got on us. Um, the first boxing tournament scheduled for December. So we got a very, very... December? Good... Yeah. December's the, the, the earliest it's going to be. Fucking hell. To be yeah. fair, maybe South Africa is doing it right because... Look, I mean, people are still dying in America and England. We're putting on boxing shows like that's the priority. I mean, Eddie Hearn's doing something in his back garden. You got Dana White flying people out to another island. So maybe the right thing is to have no boxing. All right, we're going to get more from SA uh, Boxing Talk, Hayden Jones and Emit in terms of the names to look out for in South African boxing. But let's kick off. Sammy, I'm going to come to you first on this one. Dillian White splits from Mark Tibbs. Um, are you surprised? And does it affect... Your, your feelings of how the Povetkin white fight plays out now? I was a bit surprised, as most people, I was surprised because, um, you know, the timing of this close to a fight, I'm not surprised someone's quit the trainer because fighters did all the time, but the fact that the Povetkin fight's so close and he's it, it, it begs the question, but then we've got to think, think to ourselves, I don't remember seeing Mark Tibbs in Portugal in all the videos, so I thought to myself, well, let's connect the dots, maybe it hasn't been working with Mark Tibbs. And actually, he's had another trainer with him in the Mario Swack fight. Uh, his name is Xavier Miller. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I know he was kind of developed a different style in that fight and kind of like in, in glimpses. I know he was a bit sloppy, but he showed that he was kind of in a finny shell at, at times. And mm. I could see certain different things that he was doing. So it was a surprise, but it wasn't at the same time. Um, I feel like it wouldn't affect his performance against Povetkin. Um, I don't think so, because... The way he fights and his style, I feel like for Povetkin specifically, he's fought so many pressure fighters. It's at top level. Yeah. It, you know, I think he's used to it. You know, you've got Chisora, Rivas, you know what I'm saying? So the way Povetkin fights and the way he's been fighting, and it's in, I think it's the kind of fighter Daniel White is, it's ingrained in him. So for that fight in particular, I feel like he's going to do the job no matter what. For the big boys, Wilder, Povet, um, Wilder Fury, Joshua, I would have liked to have Mark Tibbs there. I just feel like it would have been good for Mark Tibbs to have to say, yeah, I've got my, my heavyweight champion. Yeah. I was with you from when you lost to AJ. We followed up and, and we did it, you know? So that was kind of sad. But um, for Daniel as a fighter, I think it won't affect him that much because he's kind of a kind of guy that's been on the road anyway, kind of develops his own style, does his mm. thing. And I think it's more of a, a training thing that he needs to focus on. Will it affect him off, bro? Will it affect his weight? That's more of an issue for me than his actual boxing style. You know, that's my question, really. Will that affect it more? Interesting answer. Colm, um, some people will say, if it isn't broke, don't fix it, right? I mean, as Samuel said there, he's been with him since um, after the AJ fight, really. And he's been building him since then. He's got him to a mandatory position. Uh, some people say Dylan White is number three, number four in the world. W why change it now? Uh, w what's the problem? He he's looked good. He didn't look good against Marius Vac, but it was heavy. Apart from that, he's a good wins against Joseph Parker, knocked out Chisora, beat Oscar Rivas. Why change it up? I think actually it might be a really good thing. Um, I really feel like he'd start to become a bit rusty with him. I know everyone was like, oh, he's so composed against Chisora. I was watching that Chisora fight and I had five pounds on the 10th round and I had five pounds on the 11th round and I, I did not see it coming mm. at all. I thought he was getting battered. Um, and I love Dylan White. I think he's a fantastic fighter. In terms of the heavyweights, he's my favourite fighter in terms of how he actually fights. Mm. Um, not because he's the most skillful, just because of how he goes about fighting personally. Um, I do believe that, that there was, you know, Hatman spoke about this with, with AJ. People say, don't, you know, don't do anything if it's, if it's, not, bro if it's not broken. Just keep, keep going. But actually, if you are seeing that kind of... Um, kind of slow decline or kind of plateau. I think yeah. it is really good to change it up. Um, and I do believe that 
Dylan White kind of did kind of need that. I think having something different, you know, he looks amazing. You see those pictures. I mean, looks in great shape. Does mm, you, you, I see those pictures, and I was always just like, how can you be training three times a day? He says in those videos. I don't know if that's true, um, but how can you be training that much and look like that? Because he really did pile on the pounds. And I know he was so stressed after everything that was happening. Um, with failed drugs tests and you know don't get me wrong like that would possibility of ending your career being ending um at you know in your prime is is a horrible horrible thing but i think maybe adding to it i would like to see him maybe have not removed him entirely to maybe be there as more kind of like a mentor um i think it's really good to add to your stable in the same way that aj did with robert mccracken um and with um Sorry, uh, what's it? What's the guy who he introduced? Uh, I, I, I always forget his name. I always forget his name. Angel Hernandez, is it? Yes, yeah. Yeah, like Angel Hernandez, the, the way that he kind of uh, changed AJ's kind of footwork coming in at those different angles, that is what I believe won that second rematch. Um, I, thought it, I thought that was a fantastic performance. I know people said it was boring. I didn't think it was boring. I thought it was a clinical... Uh, masterpiece really and I think I have to be honest with you I, I thought it was a bit boring I, I mean I was there watching and I was like um no, you know what it is I just wanted AJ to be destructive and be like I'm gonna kill you AJ and he turned into this guy that didn't want to throw punches I, I thought it was slightly boring hold on with that for two seconds Hayden um in order to beat the top guys so yeah D Dylan White's looked okay against the guys below him right but in order to really challenge the, the Wilders, the Furies, the AJs, did we need to see a change? I mean, and this is no discredit to Mark Tibbs. I think Mark Tibbs has done a good job. But again, if we're talking about challenging the guys that he wants to challenge, he doesn't want to look back and look at the Chisoras, the Rivas, the Parkers, even Povetkin he's got coming up. He wants to really go against the big guys. Did we need to see a switch? See, I'm not sure if we needed to see a switch necessarily, but I can understand from his point of view and where he is, um, you know, being based in Portugal and Mark obviously not wanting to uh, step away from his family for a long period of time during the, during this COVID pandemic. However, we have seen Dylan White being matched, as you said, you mentioned a lot of good names there. Those are the sort of the cream of the crop just below the world champion. So he's had a good build up and he, he's in a good form right now. So he's probably the best preparation out of all the heavyweights to challenge uh, the likes of Deontay Wilder, the likes of Tyson Fury, the likes of Anthony Joshua again, if they do it again. I think his preparation's been spot on. And we saw it with Tyson Fury. We all thought, oh, why is he changing his trainer right now? Mm. Um, looked amazing in that fight. Looked amazing. Deontay Wilder, obviously, we know he isn't the best technical boxer, but, you know, Tyson Fury took it to him and did what we thought he couldn't do. And who knows? Uh, Dillian White's yet to assign a, a trainer yet, so we don't actually know who, who he's going with, what, he's, what his game plan will be. So I think it's going to be interesting to see the tactics and obviously there will be naysayers if he doesn't perform as well. There could be uh, a lot of media behind that now. Yeah. Samuel, um, how do you think the Povetkin white fight plays out? I think he knocks him out. I think he knocks him out. I think he knocks Povetkin out. You know, Povetkin didn't look good against Hunter. I'm not even just saying that. Povetkin, the style he has, do you know what I'm saying? The blue book. Klitschko had the blueprint to beat him, do you know what I'm saying? He was down a few times in that man. Perfecting's a top fighter, but I just feel like now, especially that Hunter fight, he took a lot of headshots clean. And if you watch that fight back, like, clean. Yeah. And that's never good for you. And I just feel like, particularly, we haven't really seen any training footage of Perfecting in this whole coronavirus. I don't know if you guys have seen anything. So I don't know what kind of shape he was in. I mean, he, he didn't even look, he was in decent shape against Hunter, but it wasn't the best. And at that age, it's difficult to get into be motivated training camps. He got paid a hell of a lot of money against AJ, got paid a hell of a money against Hunter because he was in Saudi. So what is his real motivation? Do you know what I'm saying? We know they're getting, they're getting a pay cut for the, um, uh, when they fight in Lenny's backyard. So I don't see, you know, I don't see Povetkin putting up much of a, of, a, of a threat as much people think. It just depends what Dinian White does, in my opinion. Do you know what I'm saying? If he makes mistakes, then Povetkin will cap cap capitalise on them. So it just depends on that. I mean, I have Daniel White. My prediction will probably be the mid-rounds. Um, you know, if he's going to stop him, it will be a clean punch, in my opinion. If, he's not gonna, if it's not going to be a clean punch, it will be win on points, just because he hasn't got that kind of finishing instincts that AJ has to finish off a Povetkin because he's still tough. 
So it's either going to be a late stoppage or points. Um, if I was to put money, I would say points just because, you know what I'm saying, Perekins are, is a veteran, so he'll probably try and survive quite well. But I would see conclusive win for Dingin. He might drop him a few times and he went on points. Colm, are we overlooking Povetkin? I mean, I feel like everyone, if you ask everyone to name their top 10 heavyweights right now, Povetkin comes in around 6-7, six, 7-8 seven, seven, maybe. He's not lower than number 8. I don't think anyone would have him lower than number 8 in terms of what have you done for me lately. Um, Dylan White's been talking in, in this build-up a lot about AJ, a lot about Fury, a lot about Wilder. He now split with his trainer, Mark Tibbs. Um, surely Povetkin's better than... You're a betting man. Surely Povetkin's better than mid-round stoppage, no? Um, I actually do think it will be a, a mid-round stoppage. I think between like five and eight, um, I think Dylan White is going to knock him clean out. Um, <laughs> I think that he's tailor... I honestly think he's tailor-made. I think he is massively on the decline. I think he really hyped himself up for that AJ fight. This was his second kind of real chance. Mm. I know he'd been um, a regular champion before, like beating Shigaya, but if you think about it, you know, he, what happened to him against Klitschko was really unfortunate. If you watch that fight, you know, it wasn't really very fair. And that was very typical of Klitschko matches in Germany. Um, they, they, it wasn't fair, but he really went for it in the AJ. And I remember sitting around with the boys and we were like, oh my God, <laughs> this guy. Yeah, I remember right AJ out. really dodgy at one stage for AJ. Yeah. But, after he lost that, I remember watching him against Huey Fury and I was like, is this the same guy? Like, he didn't look good. He didn't look good at all. It really looked like that knockout had aged him. And I think maybe some real psychological damage as well because no one's done that to him before. And I think maybe he is a little bit like just doing it, you know, thinking about the money and everything else. But I feel like that last little bit against Michael Hunter... You know, he had that second win and I feel it was a little bit like, I'm not getting beaten by this, like, prospect. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, he, like, came back really strong. And he had his moments, but I really feel he just, he old-manned, um, you know, he old-manned old uh, Hunter. So, but I think that this is, this is the moment he is really being fed to Dylan White, I think. And I think it's going to be a left hook, good night, kind of on the floor, out for the count. Interesting. Um, Hayden, both... Uh, Colm and, and Samuel said, like, what's he in it for, right? Uh, you know, he's, he's chasing money right now. Let's not forget, though, he's chasing a WBC mandatory spot as well. He beats Dillian White. He's the man, right? I mean, and then you're talking big money. I mean, it'll be his biggest paycheck ever, probably, if he used to fight Fury. I know he got paid a lot for Klitschko, but that's what he's chasing, right? An, an opportunity, a final world title crack. And another thing with Dillian White, although, yes, he's beat Parker, he's beat uh, Derek Chisora, he beat Rivas... Those weren't the best of performances. I mean, Oscar Rivas was a tough fight. Parker, some would say, was a minute away from winning that fight. I mean, Dylan White was on the ropes. And I think Colm said as well that um, Eric Chisora caused him problems. Um, surely Povetkin can cause him problems as well, no? Yeah, of course he can. And I, I tend to agree with the guys. I think this is the, probably the best time Dylan White could fight Povetkin. He's right at the end. He's, he's not in the best of form of his career. He's... You know, he's, he is there to get knocked out. Let's, let's be honest. Uh, Dillian White has a good punch. And uh, Povetkin might have motivation in this fight, maybe to get that WBC mandatory. But we've seen how long Dillian White's been waiting around for. You know, <laughs> is it really what you want? You know, he's been waiting around for the longest time. And, um, you know, there's a lot of other super fights to be made. But money, money talks. Um, maybe he's motivated. But we can't speak to, you know, his motives. Maybe he is just taking one fight and calling it a day. Because if he loses, really, what is the next fight for him? Yeah. Yeah, what is? Um, I want to mention one thing, Adi, that you mentioned. You said something about Dillian and, like, he's had a lot of hard fights. Like you mentioned, Rivas. One thing I want to say, though, is if you think about it and you weigh it up, you've got AJ, you've got Fury, you've got Wild at the top. And then if we put in Povetkin, Dillian and the other guys there, Dillian's got a way better resume than all the others. You know what I'm saying? If, you, if I tell you... If I ask you what's Povetkin's top three best wins, you know, we're all going to start saying, you know, we're not speaking quick. We say Dinia White is quick, Parker, Rebus. And before, when he fought Parker, Parker was considered a champion, you know, before he fought White. He, you know, he fought AJ and he was up the top three with him, you know, before three was there. It was him, Parker, Joshua, and Wilder for unifications. So for me, he's fought, you know what I'm saying, way better opposition than, you know what I'm saying. And like, for me, he's, 
he's battle hardened. You know what I'm saying? He's had hard fights. He's mm-hmm. been he's been down. He's got back up. He's had tough fights. Yeah. And he's and he's mentally prepared. And mentally prepared. He's gone rounds. He's been down in the last round. He's got up. He's been. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like that gives him a way bigger edge for Povetkin. You know, Povetkin's got the pedigree. Don't get it twisted. But I just feel like Dinian is used, is, especially the style as well. He's definitely used to that, and he's been there as well. You know what I'm saying? So. It depends, you know what I'm saying, it depends. But I just feel like, in terms of the class and comparing, I feel like it's close, but I feel like because we're in quarantine and we're waiting for big fights, we're really pushing all our, all our buttons on this fight and we're thinking, what's the possibilities Camp Vet can do it? Is it tough? But in reality, if things were back to normal and it was boxing, I feel like we'd say this is a, a Dinian White, you know what I'm saying, comfortable fight, he'd win. Really? I don't know if I would, Sam. And I think, no, I think. The, the thing for me is that I've always had, and look, it's taken me a long time to get on the Dylan White hype train. I will admit to that. Um, Samuel's laughing because he's watched the videos. He knows. It's taken me a long time to get on that hype train. Just because I think one, two, and three, or let's just say AJ and Fury, I think, are so far in front. And I think Dylan White, although I think he could be number three or four, I think he's also very close to number six or seven, if that makes any sense as well. Because, um, for example, I think Fury would run through Rivas. I think AJ would stop Rivas. Whereas we saw the problem that Rivas gave to uh, Dillian White. So I think he's a lot closer to those guys than he is to the top two or top three guys. Um, but I do think you're right. I do think he does beat uh, Povetkin. I do think he stops Povetkin. I just think that it won't be as easy as uh, maybe we think. Samuel, sticking with you, um, on that card, uh, fingers crossed, we now look like we're getting Katie Taylor versus Pursoon. It was supposed to be Katie Taylor versus Amanda Serrano, um, which I think for the casual viewers, it would have been a better f- spectacle because of uh, who Serrano is. Are you happy with Katie Taylor pursuit? Yeah, it's, it's, listen, the first fight was a hell of a fight, you know what I'm saying? They look, you know, it was a good fight and I enjoyed it. And for me, before that fight as well, I was, I was very mm, up and down with the women. You know, it wasn't really pulling me in, you know what I'm saying? If I'm honest, I wasn't really, you know what I'm saying, that excited when it be added to a card. It wasn't getting me the same buzz, you know what I'm saying, for moments. But that fight was a good fight and it was entertaining back and forth. So in terms of thinking about the quality we're going to get for the card in terms of how the fight's going to turn out, Pursue is going to be a much better opponent in terms of if you want a war. The question yeah. is, Katie Taylor won that kind of fight behind closed doors, a hard fight like that. You know what I'm saying? But it's a pay-per-view card, so you've got to weigh it up, pros and cons. So yeah. I don't know. I'm looking forward to it. It's a good fight. Colin, what about yourself? Um, obviously, it is now, I think it's going to be, I think it might have just been confirmed, actually. No, it hasn't been. All right, so Katie Taylor, uh, Pursoon. Are you happy with that as a replacement for Serrano? I know Chantel Cameron was trying to get in there as well. But Pursoon, good fight? Um, I think it is a really good fight. Um, I think the danger really will be that do you really want to be fighting her? She's a horrible, horrible person yeah. to be fighting. Um, and I think that was maybe part of the problem with the Dylan White and um, Derek Chisora fight, he kind of went in there kicking and screaming. It was just because it was loads of money. Um, like, I didn't think that she won that fight. Or if she did win that fight, she, it's, it's either a draw. No, she certainly lost that fight. Certainly uh, lost that fight. I, I can't even give her a draw. Yeah, or, or, she, or, or she lost it. Um, it was, you know, it's, it's what it is, isn't it? And unfortunately... Um, Unfortunately, you know, the whole point of it was this was meant to be another really big fight for, for Katie Taylor. And, and she, di- she, didn't, she didn't do well. She, maybe she doesn't do well when she travels. Sometimes that is the case for fighters. Um, but I think that as an alternative, um, you know, it would have been really, really good to watch her fight um, Serrano. I kind of disagree with, you know, you said that you think she's too small. Um, you know, this per you know, she's... Serrano's uh, gone up and down the weight classes Mm -hmm. Um, and I know in women's boxing it is not quite the same because um, you get some really really good women uh, female boxers um, but then there are a lot of kind of ones which are quite poor actually um, because the, 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 uh, the, the pool of talent isn't the same yeah because you've not got as many people competing um which is why you get a lot of people found out because they fight really they fight people at domestic level look amazing and then there's no kind of kind of uh world level or european level it's straight to kind of elite level and then they get found out 
Um, I think it's a fantastic fight, not for Katie Taylor, but I think it's a really good fight. I think it will show her strength of character if she is able to come through. Because the thing is, if she does do, if she does do it, it will, it, you know, we, we, we won't really care about the fact of that, um, of that previous kind of loss mm. where she should have really lost that fight. Um, in the same way, who was it that Floyd kind of... Um, Maidana. Oh, no. Um, oh, uh, Castillo. Castillo, yeah. Yeah. Like, I've watched that fight because um, everyone said, oh, yeah, he looks... Most of these fights are close. Most of these fights are close. But then the robbery, they're quite close these fights, even Katie Taylor's fight, it's close. I mean, because we expect, we go into a fight and we expect certain people to win and really comfortably, when it's close, or, you know what I'm saying, or they, someone, the other person has a big, like, dominates them at certain patches. It's a 12 round fight. I mean, most of these fights are close. I mean, if we're talking robberies, I would not, we wouldn't mention No, no, fights. no, I can't say, um, look, you're right. I'm not gonna, as much as I say Pursun won that fight and I've obviously, like campaigned that she gets a rematch and stuff. I'm not going to say robbery. Um, mm. you, seven, five, either way. I just felt like she won it. And obviously I know that in America, Katie Taylor is never, ever going to get that taken away from her. Hayden, where, where are you on um, Pursun versus Katie Taylor? Where are you in female boxing in general? Look, South African boxing scene. I mean, there is no female boxing scene in South Africa. I so know that one for sure. <laughs> yes, it's a difficult. Um, it's difficult to comment on. I don't know if was coming through and and so forth. But let's let's go to Katie Taylor. I mean, the the Serrano fight would have been, you know, her her big fight, and it would have been been really good for female boxing. Um, mm. I know you guys in the UK are growing. Katie Taylor's a huge name, mm. and now she's got a, a chance to. It's not, it's not the worst replacement, is it? I mean, no. she, she has a chance to sort of right a wrong as was said uh, previously. And, you know, like you mentioned in one of your other episodes, the MMA female scene is massive. Look how they're doing it there. This might've been a little bit of a lost opportunity to really pump female boxing in the UK because, you know, this is the fight everyone wanted, right? Mm, it is. Um, Samuel, uh, nice segue there as well, Hayden. MMA uh, versus boxing. I uh, made a video the other day ranting for about nine minutes about what MMA has given us. Um, in the last, you know, I say the last few months, the last 10 years, I think like MMA has given us a lot. Um, I know it's growing in South Africa with EFC. It's growing around the world as mixed martial arts. Where are you on this argument about the number one combat sport boxing for hundreds of years? Sorry, hundreds of years. A hundred years has always been the number one because there's been no competition. There's been little kickboxing events here and judo events. MMA now is a real serious competition. But has it? For you, Eclipse Boxing, yeah. No, and that video, I didn't like that video I did. That, <laughs> that, honestly, that video there, I was like, oh, I did, man. Because like, for me, it's like, for me, I feel like boxing is another, there's, there's levels, you know what I'm saying? And mm. for me, whenever you're comparing something that's above something, you want it to try and reach that, just because you want, you want to be in an ideal world where we enjoy everything and it's all... Mm the top level, do you know what I'm saying? But I feel like specifically like talking about MMA and like going back to your video and thinking about right now, like they're, they're cleaning up and, and they've always had a track record for putting big fights on. Mm. But when you think about money and you think about the state of things are, the, one of the reasons why boxing's failed to have big fights happen, like the AJ Fury and Wilder AJ took so long and things like that, is because boxing wakes, makes way more money in, in the sport. And that gradual kind of push and people being difficult in negotiations because they know this, do you know what I'm saying? And we're making up the two best fight and they know that, listen, we've got to fight anyway. We're going to make, what we're going to make is what we're going to make. Whereas See, but isn't, isn't that the problem though, Samuel? That us as yeah, fans yeah. have started to actually get involved and care about money that these guys make when really yeah. and truly as fans, all we want to see is the best fight the best. But now... Even as fans, we start arguing about, oh, he's A-side, he's B-side, he's making 100 million. It's like football. We talk about players' wages. When all mm. I want to see is the best footballers on the park, I don't really care about this person making that money and this, like, it, it doesn't really bother me. I mean, Joe Fraser, one of the best heavyweights of all time, died broke. It, it doesn't mm. really bother me about what these guys make. I just want to see them fight. Yeah. And I feel like right now we're in a position where Ryan Garcia is turning down $200,000. $200, and what the fuck has Ryan Garcia done in his life that he's turning down that? And like, I feel like boxers right now, are in a, they're in a great position, don't get me wrong, right? They, they, they dictate. 
Whereas MMA, you like your Samuel San, it's almost like they have to take whatever's on offer. But that, for a fan perspective, is good because we get to see these guys fight. Whereas boxing, I mean, we're excited about Ryan Garcia versus Luke Campbell. Mm. That's what we're excited about. And we're not going to get that until 2021. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's like, I get, I get your point. And I, and I think, like, as a fan, obviously, you know what I'm saying? There's being realistic, though, and then there's being what can actually happen. Do you know what I'm saying? I feel like, you know, MMA is... It, in terms of that aspect of making the big fights, it's true. And with boxing, we don't care about all that. We just want people to fight. But if we look into, we get our glasses on and we focus, we think to ourselves, literally, there's broadcasters, there's this, there's that. And unfortunately, you know what I'm saying, it's, 20, it's 2020, you know what I'm saying, that's how things are. You know, but hopefully with the COVID-19, and when it starts to, boxing comes back to normal, they have to put big fights on by force because the economy's mash up. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully by force. But for me, the question, going back to the question about MMA being a bit bigger than boxing, that's a whole, for me, I can't, you can't really compare that because going back to like their biggest star is probably what Conor McGregor, he's retired now, isn't it? But for him to make, for when he made that kind of money he made to, to retire, that was from the Floyd fight, mm. who at that time was the best boxer. Mm. So, he, so he kind of came to boxing, got, made, got paid big money, and then left MMA. I mean, he came back doesn't it doesn't it say a lot though where Floyd is asking for an MMA guy to come and fight him rather than a boxer because he knows that he can make more money fighting an MMA guy they can any boxer at that time. Colm, uh, moving on to you with this, Samuel, some good points there. I'm going to come back to you on them. Some great points, brother. Uh, moving on to you on this, where are you with it right now? Uh, the MMA versus boxing. Look, some people will say you don't even have to compare them. Like, why are we comparing the two? Right? I guess I'm comparing them because they're both combat sports. And we have seen the fighters cross over a little bit. We saw Dillian White say he wants to fight in Ghana recently. We've seen Conor McGregor Floyd. We've seen um, James Tony go in there against Randy Couture years ago. So we have seen a crossover. Where are you on the argument? Well, I feel like we're stuck in this kind of like um, bubble of nostalgia to do with boxing, actually. Um, I think it has. I think it really has overtaken boxing. I think we, we just kind of think about it, you know, the kind of glamorization of uh, boxing as a whole. You think about you know the kind of HBO stories that they used to do, and they were just fantastic. You can just go watch an old Mike Tyson fight and just watch like the whole mm. kind of build up that they do. They create this whole narrative. It's beautiful, and it's that's a real shame that they actually did lose that. Um, but in terms of MMA, I think it's it's really just doing what we want to do. You mean who who the hell is talking about like turning down two hundred thousand dollars? Like you know, I'm going to be a teacher. <laughs> do you know what I mean like I'm not gonna see that money for a long time um I do I, I will say this though I do think it's important as a boxer to know your worth so if you think you can get more money then go and get more money but I, again I'm talking from a fan's perspective of because of the amount of money that's available like Samuel says in boxing boxers are like mm, we don't need to fight ABC I can fight the E-rated guy and make big money I don't need to fight the next the next guy up, I think that's the biggest problem. Yeah, no, I understand that. I think I think the thing is though, what you've got to remember with this whole issue is I think it's how they treat the athletes. And I think the thing is, and I think what a lot of boxers kind of fail to miss is they're just looking for this big fight, right? Whereas in MMA, yes, they don't get paid as much, but they have loads of big fights. And that's the thing, they're regularly active, so they're regularly getting paid. Um, and it doesn't really matter if you lose, you know, like yeah, in MMA, like people lose all the time and it's fantastic because they come back and it's, you know, they get there. But I think one of the real issues um, and to do with MMA, and I think it's particularly in the women's sport, you know, I emailed you about um, my position on this as someone with a physical education background. Um, MMA, they treat their female athletes um, as professional athletes. Boxing, um, you know, they like to talk good talk about, oh, Serrano, Katie Taylor, you know, the, this is professional women's boxing, right? Whereas in MMA, it's, this is a professional fight, okay? Yeah. And the difference is you're speaking about these women um, as professional fighters rather than just being female fighters. You're talking about it in terms of they do the same amount of, uh, um, they do the same amount of time in terms of fights, um, Boxing two-minute rounds, you're basically saying that they are still amateurs when you do that. And I think that's the real difference. You don't have um, women's marathons. You have marathons. They run marathons. It's fine. They can do it. It's not a problem. 
Um, and it's the same thing in tennis as well. I think, you know, it's like these traditional sports where there is a whole kind of glamour to them, like there is a systemic problem where you look at it and kind of, they are systemically kind of sexist in that way. Um, and as a woman, would you really want to be part of this? Um, whereas, you know, you're talking about in a previous one about them um, not wanting to do anything or not having that drive after being in the Olympics. Well, part of that is I did a, an essay on, on this whole kind of topic. And it's because a lot of girls and women, they, they see their teachers or people in a training camp that they you know, go to a sports club with, they're, they're their role models. Whereas we aspire to be Ronaldo, Messi, um, Anthony Joshua, uh, Roger Federer, or something like that, because there isn't people at that top thing. They don't kind of aspire to have that because they see it's unattainable. Whereas in MMA, it's very attainable. Very, very you attainable in MMA. Attainable. Um, quickly on this one, sorry, there's a lot to cover. Um, Hayden, where are you on boxing versus MMA? I know you've covered both um, in SA. What's your arguments? Is one overtaking the other? Or are they just two separate entities and we should leave them as that? Look, it's simple. It's simple. You can't have all these big fights if you have a million bosses. You know, everyone's a boss in boxing and MMA has one boss. Uh, well, the UFC, they got Bellator and 1FC as well. But UFC is the, still the number one. They can put on the big fights if they want to because what Dana White says so. You know, the other guys don't have it like this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy. It's just too many operations. Has MMA overgrown boxing? Absolutely not. And I'll tell you why. And you made a good analogy with Arsenal and Man City the other day. But if you realize how far Man City have to still go to get to overtake Arsenal, you have to you have to take that analogy as well. Um, look, um, boxing has been around for a very long time. MMA is still relatively young. It's going to take a very, very long time for them to come. They do have Conor McGregor, as you mentioned. He's the biggest combat athlete in the world. Yeah. yeah. Uh, boxing has got a whole host of combat athletes. That, but aren't that you just, look, maybe I'm, I'm, a, I'm a grumpy old man. I'm a lot older than all of you guys, I'm sure. Aren't you just fucking fed up, though? Like, I'll be honest with you. I'm listening to you guys talk, and I'm thinking, okay, but make Errol Spence versus Terence Crawford. You know, I've been begging for that fight for three years. <laughs> so we're not talking couple of months. Errol, Terence Crawford, I think, is going to be 33 in September. Errol Spence has just come off a car crash. The fight really doesn't seem as glamorous to me as it was 12 months ago. Can we just make these fights? Like, let's be honest, AJ versus Fury is a good example. I know for a fact AJ versus Fury might not ever happen, and if it does, we're talking 2022. So I'm here sitting to you guys now in July 2020, telling you that the biggest fight in boxing might happen, might, in 2022. Isn't no one just fed up? Right, yeah. So I think you've really kind of got to look at it and it kind of really frustrates me. You know, people look for these big, big, big fights. Okay, Deontay Wilder, when he's getting 100 million, right, for two fights, got to take it. Got to take it. Like, what is another few million? Like, what, 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 what does it matter? Like, it just doesn't. And the main thing is, if you, if you want to prove yourself, and that's really when you get to this top level, the ego is coming in. You know, you're not able to have those big, big fights. They should all have happened now. They should have all happened. And we could have had rematches after rematch. And um, yeah, got Hagler, um, Sugar Ray Leonard, um, Roberto Duran. Roberto Duran had quite a few losses, you know, but he was a solid, solid boxer. Um, even after his like, you know, peak and everything like that, he was still just, a, he was a problem. He was a real, real, real problem. Um, and, you know, Tommy Hearns as well. You've got these fantastic boxes and, um, you know, and they all fought each other. You know, so, you know, there's a couple of those fights that happened twice as well. So I think that's or even three times. Um, but did Hayden kind of touched it on the head, didn't he? When he said um, it's almost like cooks in the kitchen. There's almost too many cooks in this kitchen, too many managers, too many promoters, too many networks, too many broadcasters. Um, it ain't going to happen because everyone wants a piece of the pie. Everyone's greedy. Everyone's got... They're one guy that rely on. Match from clearly AJ, um, PBC, I don't know, Javante Davis, Charlos, um, Deontay Wilder, for example. So everyone's struggling and no one wants to seem to cross over and risk their product on another PBC, network. I blame the PBC, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, we've seen that Match from man, top rank have been willing, and even Golden Boy, they've been willing to put fights on, you know what I'm saying? Lomachenko came to the UK, he wasn't with Match mm. you know what I'm saying? That was a pay-per-view fight. So they've been willing to... Put on the fights, you know, but this 
cross the street business that PBC has been saying a lot. You know, Al Heyman is one that's trying to keep things in house. You know what I'm saying? He's been doing that for long. You know, and Wilder is, is just an idiot. He's just a fool, you know what I'm saying? Because he doesn't really think for himself. He, you know, I, I was actually doing research and I was told that the only reason that Wilder actually fought Fury was because he put his foot down on it. When he, you know what I'm saying, he only told Al Heyman, I need this, I want this fight. You know what I'm saying? Otherwise, oh, I'm not gonna. You know what I'm saying? So he had to put his foot down. To, otherwise, he would have been recycling Ortiz three times, Ariola, Kaunaki. So the PBC, uh, and especially in America, they are really not willing to. And obviously, Frank has his. You know, Frank and Eddie have their little business as well. But I feel like Frank would be willing to do it for the fans, whereas Al Heyman is really saying, you know what? I'm trying to squeeze this to me as as much as possible until my fighter gets older or something like. You know what I'm saying? So. BBC got a real problem with that as well, especially with the Spence and Crawford. I've been waiting for that for the longest. It's a joke, bro. They're just... Crazy. Hayden, aren't you frustrated with it? I mean, come on. We're not seeing any big fights. And I feel like, because we're not seeing big fights, we get, we get so excited and thinking something's a big fight when it's not really a big fight because we're not seeing big fights. Like, the example is Luke Campbell, Ryan Garcia. That is... It's a decent level fight. It's not a world, there's no titles on the line apart from the stupid interim belt. But now, because we're so getting fed crumbs, we take that as a big fight. When really and truly, the big fight could be, I don't know, Javante Davis versus Ryan Garcia. Do you know what I mean? Or Javante Davis versus Devin Haney. We get, I feel like we're getting fed crumbs and um, we are taking those things as big fights. That's how desperate we are. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's not the most fun thing to watch. We're waiting years on years for these big fights. I mean, in South Africa, we get like only the biggest fights would actually come here. And it's like we're watching boxing four times a year. You know, otherwise you have to find streaming sites and so forth. But on our main network, we're only getting the big ones. And you, you see the UFC on a monthly basis. Like it's, it's basically the equivalent of boxing having unification fights every month. That's what the equivalent of the UFC is doing when they put the best versus the best. And... I, the fact that you mentioned Luke Campbell and Ryan Garcia being sort of the biggest fight you've got to look forward to, it's a bit sad because it's not even a world title fight. It's a, you know, it's just two guys that are looking to, to, to fight the world champion. And I think that's the saddest part about where we are. Yeah, it's frustrating. I'll put it uh, look, I, look, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm a bigger boxing fan than I am an MMA fan. I do rant a bit and I probably, like that video Sammy was talking about, I did rant for like nine minutes. I, I love boxing more than I love MMA, fact. I, I like fighting first and foremost, and I feel like I'm getting the fights I want to see with MMA. But to me, there's nothing bigger than a big boxing match. Like even when Conor McGregor was going to fight Khabib, that was massive. But a big boxing match just does something to me that I can't even explain. Uh, let's move on. Final subject. This one's an interesting one. Uh, PEDs in boxing. Um, I think they're there wholeheartedly. I don't think they're ever going to go away. But Jerry Forrest, who was going to fight Jerome Miller, said that um, if he were to fight Jerome Miller, that's almost like attempted murder because of the stuff that he has in his body. Um, is that an exaggeration or, or does anyone, I open it to the floor, does anyone agree with that statement? No, it's, it's definitely not like attempted right, murder. Sorry, sorry, Samuel, go on, go first, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Um, Jerry Forrest is talking rubbish. So he's just overdoing it now. I think maybe he's trying to put, put more some clout to his name in, in the media. You know, he is Boxing is dangerous in itself, you know what I'm saying? So boxing, you know what I'm saying? And that, the fact is, we don't really know what's happening behind the scenes in terms of there's some like this therapeutic use exemptions where you can take stuff and it's legal. Um, so certain states have certain things. Sometimes, you know, Pacquiao, he's firm and there was no VADA. So your favorite fights, people might be on stuff. We, we don't really know. So the fact that Gerald Minger got caught, if he was so precious about it, why did he fight, schedule to fight men in the first place? You know what I'm saying? He knew that there's a possibility that, let's say that fight got ticked, Gerald Miller could still be on something in that fight, even if he did fight him. So it's, I don't really know what he's, and I think he's overdoing it about going to prison. So basically, yeah. so what you're saying, Samuel, let me just try and understand, is that yeah. these boxers know what they're getting into. They know the yeah. sport, they know what they're getting into, so there's no point crying and screaming about it now. They're yeah, signing up to fight these guys. They know the drug testing, they know exactly what these guys are taking, really. Yeah, and taking pebs doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be, you know, 100% going to like be able to dominate and hurt somebody that bad that that could happen to them. Do you know what I'm saying? Because Miller was not no powerful puncher when he was on pebs. He was a plodder and was a, you know what I'm saying, he was throwing out a lot of punches each round. But, you know what I'm saying? I nice would and argue and say that I think concussive punches is worse than one punch knockouts. But I think if you were to ask Amir Khan... 
about his toughest fight, I think he would say Marcus Maidana over Canelo Alvarez, for example. I think he would rather just be knocked out with one punch than take several rounds of beatings. That's what Holyfield, I would like. Holyfield was on, you know what I'm saying? Holyfield was on steroids, you know what I'm saying? And that's, your, and that's many people's favourite fighter. You know what I'm saying? And actually, back in the day, things were not as strict. So we don't really know what our fighters were taking because things have only got strict now. So I'm not saying like peds are good or anything and it's bad. What I I'm hope saying, not. <laughs> what I'm saying is, I feel like Jerry Forrest is, is, is overdoing it a little bit about the prison thing. I think Minnow's thing is an extreme case. Like for him, that needs to be dealt with. But I'm, what I'm saying is, peds come in all different, you know what I'm saying? Some people take yeah. these supplements yeah. and they're not here. So you. if you're going to say prison, then you've got to come with a proper system where you say, if you take this, 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 then this that's going to happen. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's got to be okay. some kind of plan with that. You know what I mean? Colin, where are you on this? Yeah, um, I kind of have a similar um, kind of view there to Sam. You, you know, I do think people know what they're getting themselves into. Um, and I do think, actually, I think you should just kind of skip the ban. I think, I think you should, if you actually want to make an impact, then what you'd have to do is it would have to be just fundamentally against the law. Um, and you'd have to just put people in, in prison for, for doing it. Because otherwise, there's no real deterrent. Um, you know, we, we know, we know, that, you know, you're not going to be in great shape having been in prison and that's going to be more of a deterrent. But just very quickly on the concussive point, I think it's just a really in, um, interesting point to make because my, my girlfriend does a, neuro, uh, is a neuroscientist um, and I've spoken to her about boxing and she's explaining to me exactly what's going on when you get hit in the back of the head. I really think that um, in terms of PEDs, you know, it's a lot. It's not just when people get hit; it's when people land on the floor, and then that's when people, you know, can die. Um, I think really we should be having some kind of head guard behind the back of the head, so that when people do get knocked unconscious, that they're not kind of um, just falling like flat on a pancake without that concussion, because it is the uh, repetition of those heavy blows which does cause like serious brain damage rather than a one punch knockout. I would, I would argue that and say boxers know what they're getting into. And I can't believe I'm saying that, but I feel like if we were to really break it down, the sport of boxing should be banned. It's that bad, right? I mean, let's be honest, it should be banned. We're, 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 guys are getting beaten up. No one goes into the ring the same as when they come out of the ring. It should be banned. So I almost feel like boxers in that sense, regarding the concussions and the punch on the back of their head, the rabbit punches, as they call them, they kind of know what they're getting themselves into. Uh, Hayden, where, where are you on sort of steroids in boxing? Uh, prison sentence? Attempted murder? Are, are bans enough? Well, I think, I, I think if you look at, you know, uh, his position uh, c coming out of that fight and obviously missing an opportunity to fight uh, Jerry Miller, in his, in his shoes, you might find that maybe he feels that way because, I mean, he could literally have died in that ring. Who knows? Who knows? I mean, and, and, and that's it for the rest of Gerald Miller's opponents as well. You know, Anthony Joshua included. Who knows? I mean, I, I do feel that Joshua would have had an easier time. Let's, let's not make... Uh, well, I had Ruiz. Yeah, but um, Gerald Miller still, I mean, on PEDs, we don't know. And when you're talking about him being banned from the sport completely... What more of a deterrent do you need than a life sentence? Like, like, like we said previously, you know, would jail time make it more, make, make it less, um, what's the word? Less a deterrent. Yeah. Uh, to, to do? I don't know, because a life ban seems like it's, not, like it's not big enough for him already. Mm, I, I just feel like, how much do we really care about, and I've said this on Addy and Friends in the past, how much does anyone in this chat here now care about Boxers on PDs. Uh, Samuel said it before that everyone's favorite boxer here, I don't know who they are, but might have dabbled, right? I mean, the 80s and 90s were full of boxers taking PDs, full, standard. Um, in the 90s as well, 2000s, like your, your favorite boxers probably dabbled. The guy that you want to see fight next, Canelo, be it Tyson Fury, be it Billy Joe Sun, has been caught doing something. Do, do we really care? I, I, I always ask this question because I, I want honest answers. Samuel, you first. You're shaking your head up the top. Do you really, really care? Look, you know, I don't really, you know, I'll be happy. Listen, AJ said he didn't mind to fight Drew Miller on steroids, you know, so it's, he didn't Interesting. Mind. That's very I would, interesting. I, yeah. I would pay money to watch that still. You know, people are crying when the fight was camped. 
but people would still pay money. They'll probably pay more money, probably get more buyers because niggas on, you know what I'm saying? So I don't really mind that much. You know, it's only the after effects when people find out, people are like, oh, you know, and everyone's angry. But for me, it's kind of like, you know, I know um, what Mike Tyson was saying, like he was saying that he feels that like all of the boxes are on steroids, you know what I'm saying? So if we make it, a, you know, I don't really mind that much. It might even be more fun facts. We might get bigger fights happening, you know, more entertaining. But I feel like the problem is when it's not even, you know what I'm saying? Because we're not on that, it's the, the boxing is not like that where everyone's just taking stuff. You know, we don't know that. But for right now, well, that's what we're assuming. So if one person's working hard, Masha work in the gym, and the other guy's cheating, they're that's getting the paid. problem. Is that fair? Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah. unless we universally do it, I don't think it's right. But do I care that much? Like, is it like, no, because Fury's done it, Billy Joe's done it, you know, other guys done it, you'll still watch them. So it is what it is. Povetkin's done it multiple times, you know what I'm saying? That's why sometimes Eddie Hearn, he, he, he contradicts himself a couple of times. He will be shouting passionate 40, 40 minute talks on IFL about Jerome Minger, yet, you know what I'm saying, you got Povetkin on there, he signed Billy Joe like, like that. Other guys have done it. You know what I'm saying? It's all about money at the end of the day. It makes money make sense. And if you don't get caught, then you're still getting paid. So I just feel like I'm not really that bothered. But I understand why boxing fans do get upset. But I'm pretty sure if they were to, if they wanted to still have the fight happen, they'd be wanting the fight happen. They'd still say, yeah, let Joe Miller fight Joshua. If Joshua's happy to do it and the commissions are happy, we'll still pay. And I'm pretty I, sure... I don't even still- think like... I don't even know if it's not even like boxing fans that don't care. I feel like anyone, like even tabloids and media and newspapers, like the Jarrell Miller situation, for example, I know that the YouTubers, like we covered it, right? We were like, oh, crazy. But national press didn't give a fuck. Like it didn't even resonate, like it didn't even mean anything to them. Like I remember, I was young enough to remember when a sprinter called Marion Jones got caught and cameras flooded to her house. I mean, they took her to court. She went to jail for six months because of lying to the to the um to the her legal team. Um so where are you on it, Colin? Do you care about it? Does it does it really affect if you watch a fighter? Honestly, right, I'm just more upset that the fight's cancelled, if I'm being truly honest. Like <laughs> you know <laughs> I was just like, oh I wanna see AJ versus Joel Miller. That was, you know, I was so invested in it. Mm. Um, and the same thing with, uh, with Billy Joe Saunders. I really felt that was the coming out fight to make the Canelo fight with mm. Andrade. Um, but really, I think actually, you know, I'll I tell you what I really do want to see. Um, you know how uh, uh, Joe Rogan was talking about having kind of hormone therapy and he actually does it himself because he thinks it's better for when you are older. Mm. Um, I heard Roy Jones Jr. talking about how he would come back for one fight and one fight only, and that's the Mike Tyson fight. I want. I would be very happy for them both to be taking that stuff, for us to see them kind of fight each other. I know that's an awful thing to say, but imagine how good that fight would be. What to see? Roy Jones Jr. versus Mike Tyson, both on full PEDs, having a go. Hayden, you've moved room. That was that was interesting. Watching you go around your house there. Where are you on um, PEDs and boxing? Do you give a shit? Yeah, most definitely. I mean, you're going to look at guys after their careers. Yeah, I mean, as a fan, it's great, but you you don't want your favorite fighters to become a vegetable after the sport, you know? Like, let's be honest. Like, if everyone goes, everyone takes the punishment that they're going to be taking, it's not great. Um, you know, I feel for the guys. I know as as fans, we, we, we generally just want to see guys just like Mexican-style fighting and, you know, going at each other. But the bo- boxing's adapted and changed, and maybe to the detriment, maybe maybe... You know, we're not getting our money's worth anymore. Maybe that, maybe that's a real, a real thing. But yeah, I don't like PDs at all, and um, that's that's why that's why I, I wouldn't say jail time, but I would say life ban. Yeah, I, I, I guess the difficult thing is there are so many PDs. So I think when we as fans hear someone has failed a PDs test, we immediately throw the life ban at him. But I know for a fact there is a big difference between what Billy Joe Saunders took. And what Gerard Miller took as EPO human growth hormone. I'm not, I'm not sticking up for Billy Joe Saunders. I'm just saying there's a big difference. All right, final point, guys. I'm going to go around the room here. Um, what are you looking forward to? I'll start with you, Sam. What are you looking forward to in 2021 from boxing? What do you think boxing is going to give us? Uh, I was going that's to the problem it. right there. See, look at that. See, that was my problem. That's, that's the reason I say boxing, MMA is taking over boxing. Look at the deep breath he took. He's like, I, what, I don't know. You know what, man, I also want the big fights, you know what I'm saying? I want the big fights. Um, you know, I like to 
And if you had, if you had like a crystal ball and you could make one fight, so one big fight, what one big fight would you make right now in boxing? I would make um, Crawford Spence for me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because for me, that fight would ask a lot of questions, and I feel like you know whatever you're going to get with that fight, you will get a good fight. You know what I'm saying? All the other big fights, there's a, it could be a potential snooze fest in my opinion. Yeah. Even AJ Fury, they could both play it safe and it could be a snooze fest, go on points, get paid, leave. But I feel like Spence, <laughs> Crawford, <laughs> you're going to get a good fight. You're going to get, if you like boxing, you're going to get a high level, yeah. action packed, a thousand punches. It's, it's going to be a proper boxing fight. And that's what I want to see ultimately. So, and that's the two best in it, you know what I'm saying? And, and if, Okay, we've got Pacquiao, but that would be some kind of be uniform. No, I, I agree. I, I think they're above, above Pacquiao now, especially this 41-year-old Pacquiao. Colin, what about you? Um, what's the one fight, if you could make it, if you were like Mr. Promoter of all promoters, Dana White of boxing, what fight would you be making right now? I would be making Tyson Fury, AJ. I think it's just the one that um, I think we, 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 we waited too long for the, you know, the, the Wilder, the Wilder um, AJ fight, and it just yeah. didn't happen. Um, and that's ridiculous, you know, th th these fights should be happening. Um, because they can happen. That's a fight as well. Sorry to interrupt you. That's a fight as well. Like, boxing is so on the back pages and right, like, not even on the, the main back page because football dominates. Tyson Fury versus AJ is a fight that would be as big as any football match here. It would be on the front page as well. It's the fight that would, like, push boxing to another level, I think, over here. Yeah, it, it will be. It'll be amazing. Um, and and personally, I, I I just so hardly believe that AJ will um, knock Tyson Fury. I just feel like he's so wrong for him. Like everything about, I think he's just. I think he'll bully him. Actually, Ooh. I think he really will. I think he'll. I think it will be nasty. I think he'll he'll really go to town on it. Um, so that's interesting. What I want to see. see, if I say that, they say that AJ's an arslicker. I mean, Eddie's an AJ arslicker. You're saying it. So um, that's interesting, Hayden. What about yourself? Um, what fight would you like to see or, or make if you could? You know, if I, if I was a matchmaker, I would love to see, you know, the Muhammad Ali trophy. I would love to see the lightweight division. At the moment, it is stacked. I would love to see all those guys. Tifimo Lopez, Vasil Lomachenko, Devin Haney, Javante Davis, the Ryan Garcia, if you want to add the names in. Jorge Linares, we can bring him back. You know, there's a lot of guys. Rob, in that Robert division. Easter. No, Robert Easter, he's going up to 140, actually. But I think he would get his ass back down to 135 for it. I'd even chuck Richard Comey. I know he got knocked out, but I'd chuck him in as a dangerous guy as well. I, I agree. I think that lightweight division is frightening. And I think we're just not going to see the fights. No, we won't. We won't see it. But I mean, you know, if we if we were if we were matchmakers and we had hundreds of millions of pounds, dollars, we'd, we'd be making these fights. Yeah, that would be a good one today. All right, final thing, Hayden. Uh, let us know what's going on in SA Boxing. Who should we be looking out for in the world of South African boxing? Look, it's all the small guys, hey? Like, all the guys that no one wants to watch. Uh, Maruti and Solani, uh, the RBF flyweight world champion. I mean, he's probably the pound-for-pound pound number one in Africa at the moment, uh, hands down. Um, Hickey Butler, I mean, he's been around forever. If you're looking at the bigger weight divisions, Kevin Dorina, the um, the cruiserweight world champion, well, the RBO. I don't know if you you know RBO. No, it's still a belt, still a belt, still the world title. Cruiserweight world champion. Um, trying to think of sort of names. What about Timbani? Who's that? Um, you've got oh, what's, I saw he's a hundred and fifty four pounder. Is it Timbani? Oh, um, I'm talking about Timbani and Benge. Yes. Yeah, Solani and Benga, you know, he recently lost in Germany. He was supposed to have a comeback fight, but he, he was supposed to get matched against uh, some other guy on a top rank ball, and it just never materialized. And um, oh, I forgot the guy's name. But anyway, South African boxing, I, I think um, if you guys don't know, Zinga Fuzile as well, he was also going to be fighting Tevin Farmer, but uh, he got um, knocked out by a guy that was taking smelling salts. So we never got to, we never got to see that fight. I remember that one, yeah. And they tried to... Um do a no contest on it and it didn't get overturned to a no contest which is a shame guys thank you so much um samuel colum hayden very impressed with your knowledge of boxing um and i like the way you all disagreed with me about mma not being as big as boxing then again i think colum you kind of agreed that it's superseded it now didn't you i think you said it's gone past it yeah thank you so i i i, I thank you for being with me and the rest of you obviously they don't know what they're talking about it's not their fault